Hello, good evening, welcome to Our Front. My name is Raymond Dakwa. My guest today was the man at the helm of affairs at the finance ministry when Ghana had its highest GDP growth rate in the Fourth Republic. After this break, we'll be talking about what can be done about this economy, which we all agree is in dire straits. You welcome back to Our Front. My name is Raymond Aqua. Tonight, the man who steered Ghana, even during an IMF program in 2009, to getting what most people have touted as our best times in this fourth republic, that is a GDP growth rate of 40.5%, a single digit inflation for more than 40 months. That man is my guest. In that finance ministry, which is also currently having a lot of difficulties because of the current economic situation we find ourselves. What can be done differently in Ghana's economy to steer it back to the prosperity years he had some time ago? And are there solutions that can be put on the table? My guest is Dr. Kwame mm -hmm. Doc, you're welcome to our front. Thank you very much, Raymond. I hope you are doing well. Very well, by his grace. I'm the, okay. The, the, the conversation is interesting because these are extremely bad times for us not long ago barely two weeks ago major major institutions that do rating downgraded Ghana into the junk status Fitch and SMP proud to that though we've already had the finance ministry telling us that our economy is terrible and we are engaging the IMF and we are possibly going to have a program to get some balance of payment support Within that period, inflation has been skyrocketing. We are at 31.7 now, almost 32%. And as if to cap it all, we just had the PURC announce very huge increases in utilities, which will compound inflation anyway, as we know it to be. Now, when I compare it to the periods where you were finance minister, it sounds very interesting. But from where you sit, and I know you are not managing the economy today, from where you sit, what's the actual state of the Ghanaian economy? Thank you, Raymond. As you've mentioned, we are in a very difficult situation. You've mentioned it all. Inflation is over 30%, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. And we have huge unemployment figure, about 13.4%. Mm -hmm. The youth don't have any jobs to do. Yeah. Prices are what skyrocketing, so obviously we are in a very bad state. So we have a huge responsibility as Guineans to get ourselves out of the hole. That's why we are here today. I now, want us to talk about the economy, mm -hmm. the world of politics. Interesting. Now, of course, economy, the world of politics will be interesting to have it with you. Just but the economy, yes. And the economy, yes. Yeah, but. You've been there before. Yes, I have been there. And I did state early on that during your time, in all fairness, the figures looked way better than it is today. Yes. Where did we go wrong? Thank you very much. Thank you. You're talking about when I was there. Mm -hmm. At the time I was leaving, for example, the total public debt was 35 billion Ghana cities. We were managing revenue of 16, almost 17 billion. So look at the difference. Total public debt, 35 billion. Revenue, about 17 billion. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are talking about revenue of about 96 billion. Yeah. And total public debt of about 400 billion. Yeah. So the interest we were paying, or we paid, on the date, 2012, was about 14.6% of our revenue and grants. I see. You understand? Yeah. And the total debt service took only 19.8% of our revenue and grants. Today, we are spending about 15% of our revenue and grants to just pay the interest and for the debt service, it takes mm -hmm. about 72%. So we are in a huge difficulty. Did, big we, mess. Did, did we just burrow ourselves into the mess? Because 
I mean, in mm. fairness, Zhu left office in 2012. By the time the, this government was taking over, in 2016, 2017, the debt had risen from your 35 billion you mentioned to 120 billion. Yeah. That's a huge jump. Yeah, but I'm talking about a 10 year period. Okay. Okay. We have raised the debt from 35 billion to 400 billion in 10 years. Mm -hmm. The revenue has only increased from 16, 17 billion to 96 billion. We've bust ourselves. In the corner, the debt has grown so big within 10 years, ahead of revenue. Why do you think that was the case? Because, let's get back to when we started the Fourth Republic. Yeah. Okay. Any economy grows, one invests heavily in the public infrastructure. We have not been doing that as a nation. Really? Yes. Roads, schools, Between 93 and 96, yeah. the government did so well. They invested 60.5% of the revenue and grants in public investment, in particular infrastructure development. I see. Therefore, they were building the economy. They were growing the economy, creating jobs, great revenue for you and I. Between 93 and 96, first class. But since then, we've been consuming more than investing. When they invested 60.5%, it meant we were only consuming 30 point what? Point five. It's not interesting because every government, since but the since period the, you mentioned, yeah. would point out significant monumental structures, infrastructure Let me give the that they have invested so much into. Let me give the figures to you. You may do your own research, mm -hmm. okay? From 60.5% between 93 and 96, it dropped to 30% by 208. And now, it's about 23%. Oh, I see. So right now, we invest only 23.3% in infrastructure and public projects. And we consume about 70% of our revenue. You understand? I get you. I've done my research, the figures are there. So when you consume and not invest in infrastructure, infrastructure is the future of every nation. Mm -hmm. You understand? It does provide jobs. Okay. So when you have consumed your revenue and not provided jobs for the people, how do you raise revenue again? So you see, you look at the revenue generation over the period. Between 205, 208, revenue did very well. It was not bad. About 21% on nominal basis. Between 209, 2012, it was 31.5 on nominal basis. Then it dropped to about 19% in 2016. And now it is so low, very low, because we did not invest in areas where jobs could be created for revenue to grow. That's where we are now. And because revenue was not coming, because we're not doing well in the domestic resource mobilization, my friend, we have to borrow. Okay, to fill the gap. To, to fill the gap. We have to eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have to borrow. So by borrowing, we were putting a lot of pressure on ourselves by paying interest on the borrow funds. When we're having difficulty in the domestic borrowing, we went outside. 2013, what did we do? We borrowed one billion dollars from the Eurobond market. Yeah. 2014, another one billion Eurobond market. 2015, another one billion in the Eurobond market. 
2016, about 750 million. Then we ended 2017. It was not one billion, but we two billion. Up, yeah. Two billion. So right now, we have boxed ourselves in a corner with huge borrowing from the international financial market. And because we have the difficulty in managing our debt, they have shut us from that market. We cannot borrow from there again. Brilliant. It's the question I wanted to ask you about this because much of what we are being told today is that because of what happened with COVID and the Russia-Ukraine war, we couldn't get a much received two billion that comes in every year, beginning of the year, from Eurobond. Is the reason why we are in seeming turbulent times this year. And if we have gotten that amount of money from Eurobond, we would have been in better position. And the only reason we are not getting that amount of money is because effectively, COVID has placed us in a very tight corner. Where you sit, is it a fair, proper, and a truthful analysis of what's currently happening to us? You see, my brother, if you look at the effect of the COVID, the effect of the ukraine russian war mm -hmm. on the African countries, look at the figures available. I will have difficulty agreeing with you. Okay. There are 15 African countries who have registered several decades inflation now, 15. including our own neighbor Togo, La Côte d'Ivoire, mm -hmm. Burkina, Tunisia, Morocco, about 15. Are you telling me the war jumped over all of them and came to Ghana? Come on. Except the argument for the Francophone countries is that they, they have a different economy. What about Kenya? Oh, okay, they are very low inflation. Uganda. Too. Miss Somalia, about 70%. We have done something wrong, and we should acknowledge that and try to correct it. That's what I'm saying. Don't let us talk politics here. Okay. We are in a hole. How do we come out? As we speak, the inflation contributors, transport and other things, yeah. but food is also a major part of it. With a country that's invested in the last few years so much into agriculture, yeah. how then do we have such high inflation, which has also been uh, pushed by food and other areas? How do we deal with our current hyperinflation status? You are talking about the inflation coming from the supply side. Mm -hmm. We are not getting enough food from our agricultural sector. Really? There are constraints. Yeah. When they produce, transportation from the farm gate to the urban center is a problem. We don't have storage facilities. And as I mentioned, the total factor productivity growth is so low that the yield per acre cannot compare with what we have in the developed world. You understand? I get you. Yeah. So we have to look at that. How do we make our farmers richer by producing more? And by even buying the goose off their neck. Go to rural areas. Tomato growers, they have the tomato. Who is buying them? Mm. Years ago, we set up uh, the food buffer stock. Yes. Yeah. We should be able to buy all these from the farmers, store them, even if by doing that, government will have a problem. Let the farmers get their incomes. Give them incomes to be able to keep on growing, planting for us, and not abandon them with the rotten tomatoes and other things. It's not right. I see. If we fix that, and, and I'm actually looking at the bigger picture of inflation. Yeah. How do we deal with it? It's, it's currently at 31.7. How do we deal with it? Inflation? Yes. Inflation has about uh, 15 drivers. Mm. Out of this, nine come from the food sector. Yeah. We've been having grapes being the, <laughs> the highest inflationary driver. Grapes. Mm -hmm. Who is grapes in this country? It's you. No, I don't think I do, but that's fine. Yeah, it's the rich people, yeah, not, not me. You're one of them. 
and we have uh, these uh, fruits. Yeah, that's true. How to call it? That's it. it does very well around the Adar area. How to call it? Watermelon. 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 Yeah. Can this be a problem? Watermelon is driving inflation. Who are those eating watermelon? And the effect is affecting all of us. Whether you eat watermelon or not, whether you eat grapes or not, inflation is affecting you. So nine drivers of inflation are from the food sector, which I believe we can resolve seriously. It shouldn't be a problem. That's what I'm saying, that it's not all that bad. Mm. No. In my area, we say Achia, but in me. It can be done. But we have to work zero at it. How can watermelon be a problem? Hmm? Yeah. Rice, yeah. grains. We have huge arable <laughs> land. Yeah. We are able to plant rice, grains, watermelon, and they must be imported. Raymond? There's a question though about the, you know, we talk about the debt situation. Yeah. And it's currently, you talk about how dangerous it is now and everything that we are supposed to be doing going forward. There's a proposal that we need a forum. Were you at Sinchi? I was in London, but. Oh, I you're not there. I had a rep there. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. <coughs> we had a Sinchi forum in, before our IMF program in 2015. There's a proposal that we should do a similar one so that we find ways, like some of them you are suggesting, of dealing with the debt problem and extend it to the economic and find ourselves. Is it a very laudable idea? Would you attend? You want to go, sure to, they'll be, they'll, want to, go to St. Chi to pay rent, to eat, and to increase the budget? Can that be, it can be done here, anywhere. You have to go to St. Chi. At I most didn't go to St. Chi. But I think he had the best economic program, which the fund endorsed. Okay. Yeah, you that's understand? interesting. Yes. Do mm. we have to travel outside to think about the economy? I think the idea is that we should have a forum so that people can bring the ideas about people like you who have managed this economy before. The forum can be held here, okay. anywhere. Mm. I'm saying that we should stop burdening the budget of the nation. Okay. We should cut down the expenditure. I see. We should. Even now that we have cut down 30%? We can still cut it. Look, Prof Mills reduced his MDAs from 27 to 23. Oh, I see. You understand? I get you. President Kufu worked with 27 MDAs. Mm -hmm. Prof Mills came and cut it down to 23. We can still cut expenditure down. If you don't have revenue, if you don't grow the revenue, what do you do? You cut the expenditure down to make sure that you don't overburden yourself. You understand? Mm. Yes. We're talking about which fruits are consumed in Ghana and which ones are consumed elsewhere. And we actually brought this conversation about what to do into it. Yeah. Bloomberg has not been very friendly to get Ghanaian economy recently. It has actually ranked as city as one of the worst performing, actually the worst performing on the continent. It, 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 it sounds strange, but there's this professor at John Hopkins University who equally gives what many Ghanaians don't like, very, very terrible reviews about our economy, and sometimes says our city is extremely terrible state. How do we get that currency back on track? Currently, it's almost more than 11 CD to the pound and almost 10 CD to the dollar, some 9.2, 9.3. Even 9.6, some are quoting. How do we get the CD back on track in a way that will be comfortable? Because they tell us that even our inability to reduce fuel prices is some way linked to the city's performance. In fact, even the recent increase in electricity and water, they brought the depreciation of the city as a factor into it. What can we do about the city? There's so much pressure on the city mm -hmm. because we do not have enough dollars in the system. Okay. We don't have dollars in the system because the export earnings we make every year. 
which is shown in what we call the balance of payments analysis. Mm -hmm. The total export earnings, we don't have more than 20% impacting on central bank's cash flow. Mm. Let's take the oil from the Ministry of Finance's own data. We exported $3.9 billion of oil in 2021. From the same uh, office, Ministry of Finance, they are saying that our portion was $5.3 million out of $3.9 billion. So the 3.4 went to the owners of the company or companies. Oh, you understand? I get you. At the same time, we, Ghana, had to use $2.7 billion to import petroleum products for our consumption. In what effect, we are not a net exporter of crude. I we are say not, so. You are saying so. We are not effectively <laughs> the people that we say we are, that, that rich, oil-rich country. I, have not that's, that, I haven't made that statement. No, but that's just what you say. That's I'm, the meaning of it. I mean, to be fair. Sure. I'm saying that. Yeah. You, you exported $3.9 billion yes. of oil, mm -hmm. and your portion was $5.13 million. About $500 million. Yeah. At the same time, you spent $2.7 billion to bring in petroleum products for consumption. So who are you? What comes to? That means that we will still need a lot more dollars to even bring in petroleum for consumption. That's exactly. the point. Exactly. This is where some of the structural issues about the economy come from and must be tackled. You go to the minerals, it's even worse. I see. The minerals will be exporting. Mm -hmm. What proportion impacts on our cash flow? Also about 20%. Yeah. So if you look at the total export earnings for 2021, which stands about 14.7 uh, billion, not more than 4 billion impacted on our cash flow. The only thing is cocoa. The cocoa earnings all came back to the central bank and impacted on our cash flow. But for gold and oil, there are some structural challenges which must be looked at. So Coco is still the one supporting us today. Coco that is, is still that is our only backbone. Top. That's it. It is still our backbone. Really? Yes. An oil-rich country. That is why... A country with minerals. That's right. That is why... When the we formal gold coast. <laughs> that's right. Your gold is not for you. Your oil is not for you. Do you understand? At least you bet gold. You didn't change it, right? You didn't get us 80%. What? You didn't get us, you at the time that we had gold, you didn't get us 80% of the gold. 80%? Yes. Are they yours? You own the gold money companies? That's interesting. We don't, I mean, to be fair. No. We have done an event here in my uh, IFS here. Mm -hmm. And we are saying that to, to the extent that we are using concessionary model to manage our natural resources would not get much from them. We have to shift to participatory, participatory mm. partnership. Okay. Let's partner. Okay? That's been done in Botswana and other areas. In effect, we should not just invite people to come and manage the thing and give us 10% or 20%. We should partner them. Let's say 50-50 or 60-40. Oh, of course, yes. Our forefathers were using Abusa and Abunu in managing the economy. Those, they didn't go to school. Mm -hmm. They used Abusa. Do you understand Abusa? I'm not so sure. Go to Tamahaba, the fisheries section, and ask how they're managing that industry. Okay. Years ago, my wife ran a fishing boat. And she went through the Abusa system. Mm -hmm. She had her boat. She had no net. Okay. So she had to hire the crew, mm. the fishermen, and had to hire the net. Okay. So the catch is that divided came in, amongst divided them. Divided three. Madam, one third because you are the boat owner, mm -hmm. the net owner one third, and then the crew one third. Abusa is being practiced in the fishing industry. Go to our villages. We have Abusa, Abunu. 
Why not? Is it time to re renegotiate some of these arrangements? It's time to look at the whole thing again. We're not getting much from that. Oil, gold? Everything must be looked at again. These are the structural challenges we are going through as a nation. Okay? Okay. We have the resources, mm -hmm. but the management has not been the best. Okay. It's interesting. Now, I want to push you on this because you've been finance minister. Virtually every finance minister has had some slight difficulties with the city and what to do about it. During your time, I mean, of course, currently they tell us it's central bank's responsibility. That's monetary policy. During your time, how would have the finance ministry or government ask finance, uh, the Bank of Ghana to intervene or work differently at this particular problem? Because as we are, it's getting worse by the day. The immediate measures to stem the tide, what can we do? You see, during my time, the governor and I had a program for that. Okay. When we came to office, the dollar was 1.20. Mm. Okay. 1.20. One CD, 20 pesos. That is, I mean, it's so interesting. That's January. This is January 2009. And, and in 2022. I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm January just envisioning how far we have come. 1.20. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. At the time we're living, it was 1.80. Four years. So four years, the city moved from 1.2 to 1.8. The collaboration between me and the governor was superb. I see. Okay. And I'm not saying there were no challenges. There were challenges. Oh, I see. The first quarter of 2012, the city was running away. It was. Mm. But we put our heads together, and April 2012, we put down measures which were able to arrest the city so that the second half of 2012, look at your figures, mm. the city was stable. Yeah. The first half, we had a problem. Second half, it was stable. Yeah. I've seen something, some remarks made by <laughs> Dr. Baumia. Yeah. <laughs> on uh, 12 August 2012, insulting us that we were not able to build the city. That's not correct. 2012, the first half, there were challenges. We sat down, put out the measures, and by the end of the year 2012, the city had become stable. Look at July, August, September, up to, up to December 2012, you see the city being stable. So once again, the question, the answer is that we took over this, the country where the city and the dollar was 1.2 mm -hmm. cities to a dollar. After four years, when we left, it was 1.8 cities to a dollar. I mean, there is more depreciation since the beginning of this year than has happened in four years within that period. That's what shocks me. So the question I'm actually asking is, what can we learn from that period and implement now? What can we do to stem this particular city that's galloping, that's gone out of range and given us a very bad name? The public expenditure must be looked at. The spending must be looked at. Oh, really? Especially when revenue is not coming. Mm. If you're not growing the revenue, you must watch your spending. That will affect your currency. I see. We must also be careful. We are destroying our institutions. Okay? A young economist will say, oh, when the fundamentals are right, so so. It goes beyond that. If you are destroying institutions like the judiciary, really? Of course, it would have an effect on your currency. CD. But the investors say, hey, we're the country okay. in which there's no law. Political stability. Yes. Why do you destroy your banking industry? I'm an investor. Mm -hmm. Will I have a bank to work with? No. So apart from the fundamentals, making your currency strong, institutional destruction is a serious issue that must be looked at. We are talking too much. Okay? Yes. During my vetting years ago, I said money is a special commodity. 
He doesn't like noise. I see. <laughs> you are talking too much. I mean, are you talking about speculators? You're, are you talking about uncertain, government uncertainty people? Uncertainty in the system. Uncertainty. You are okay. too, too much uncertainty in the system. But it's not the reality we are talking about. The economy is not in a good state. The CD, every single morning, people dread it. There is not enough dollar in the system. Okay. I understand. So it to impact on the CD. Yeah. But I'm saying that, that this is the fact that we don't have enough dollars. You are also destroying yourself, institutions, everything. Now, we can build the dollars. Why not? There should be a, a fallback position. If you, are, if you ask me, how do you go about it? Also, we should look at the Bank of Ghana. I hear they want to buy gold. Yeah. I want to make some recommendations, which I believe may change the narrative. Okay. We have something. We have gold. We have exporters of gold. Don't we have them? We do. They're exporting the gold. Central Bank has come out that they want to start buying gold from 1st September or so. Yeah. It's a good idea. I support that. They should meet almost all the exporters of gold. I have a deal with them. They should buy the gold from them. Maybe at a premium. If they do that, they'll be happy to sell the gold to the central bank. Do you hear me? I get you. And central bank, when they beat them, they will have a clear view of the gold that they're going to buy. With the projected data, central bank can go into forward sales agreement, forward sales arrangement, sell the gold forward mm, with some instruments, and grow okay. the dollars. Dollars into the country. Yes. I have my gold. I expect two billion from Raymond. Mm -hmm. I'm selling this forward. Who would him buy? They can sell this forward. They can also use the gold project, projected data they have from the exporters and enter into what we refer to as swap arrangement. Swap. I'm swapping my gold for dollars. I'm not selling. Swapping it. Give me dollars. Take the gold. What I have money, I'll come for my gold. Really? It can be done. When we're in the COVID uh, situation, yeah. the Federal Bank of Federal Reserve Bank of US opened their doors, the windows, to about nine countries mm. who went in for swaps. Singapore was one. They used their own currency. A swap the dollars to manage the economies. It can be done. And what is term the current uh, depreciation? Whilst we are waiting for the IBA program, we can mobilize ourselves through the gold sales. Either we go in for forward sales, mobilize dollars to service our foreign debt, to increase the central bank reserves. So that the CD okay, can stabilize. Will stabilize. So that we'll have dollars to bring the imported items we need so badly. I see. Like crude. Like crude and everything. Yes. It's not a Japa at all. For a Japa, mm -hmm. if you go to Central Bank, it's something we started in 2010. Oh, you started a Japa? It wasn't a Japa. It was Ghana Gold Company I set up. It was established. But we didn't complete. We we're going to leverage on all the gold shares government has in various gold companies. And we're forming Ghana Gold Company Limited for Ghana. A Japa came out of that. We are not talking about the Japa. I'm talking about the situation we are in now. I see. We don't have time, do we? Mm -hmm. No, not at all. We I can't mean, we need wait for eight months, measures, eight yeah. months for the IMF, IMF to come yeah. and help us. Mm -hmm. But we have a resource like gold, which others are selling. Mm -hmm. We have gold exporters. We have given license to people. When I say we, I mean government, Ghana. The Guineans and foreigners who are selling gold. We are saying that 
let's, let us buy your gold, Central Bank. We are paying you. You understand? And we are going to sell this gold forward and get dollars to service our debt and to build the central bank reserves, which should not put pressure on the city anymore because we have enough dollars in the system. The gold belongs to us. It's our resource, isn't it? I get you. And they are selling. Mm. So we'll sell to central bank. Would that be too much? It's a very interesting. Do you think that's why they're asking them to bring, they're they going to buy the gold? Is it, is it the same thing they want to do? Government um, is buying gold. I do not know. Government has met them. In fact, just last week so there was a meeting. Bank, yes, okay. Yes. So. Just last week there was a meeting okay. with all of these uh, industry players, together also with the people from the Minerals Commission and virtually everybody involved. I don't know how much you know about that meeting, but do you think that's what they're going to do? No, as a former governor, I know that Central Bank has gold all the time. Yeah. And when I heard it, they were going to build up the stock. Yes. Which was also going to strengthen their reserves. But the idea of using gold as a swap, I haven't heard it. It's my own idea. Wonderful. And the issue of they selling forward is also my own idea. Mm. So that we'll be able to bring in enough dollars quickly to resolve the issue because we are sinking. We cannot wait for eight months for anybody to come and help us. We have our own gold. We can use that to resolve the problem. Beyond the swap system, how else can we help the city? Or oh, this is enough to fix the current problem? Let's cut out the expenditure. Okay, yes, you mentioned that first. It's important. Mm -hmm. We align our expenditure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's invest in productive ventures to okay. provide jobs for the people. Mm. In addition to the sale I'm talking about, which will bring more dollars into the central yeah, bank okay. and therefore will put some of the pressure off the city. Okay. Yeah. Now, th there's a point though. Um, th there's a point about what else we can do about all of these people who have decided that this is the best time to hit a man when he's already down. I'm talking about the rating agencies the virtual consistent ratings. Even today, the APRM have caused to say that uh, their downgrades are worsening the economies in our sub-region. And people, uh, countries like Ghana are actually suffering out of this. Do we have a case when we say they are treating us unfairly? Fitch, SNP, and what can we do differently? People say they don't trust the kind of management we are putting in place and the policies we are putting in place. What can we do differently for them to start appreciating what's happening in our economy so that we can turn around the corner? You see, when the whole world has ranked yeah. nations with huge debt, yeah. we have difficulty servicing the debt, yeah. and you happen to be number two in the world, who wouldn't focus on you? Okay, so they're we, not targeting we are, us. We are number two after El Salvador from the ranking I have seen. So quickly, we should change our situation. Mm. Understand? Let's change our situation and they wouldn't be focusing on us anymore. Let's service our debt. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let us build our reserves. But if we don't do any of these and we stay at where we are now, look at the debt distress ranking. Oh, yeah. And if you are so high, just after El Salvador, who would you target you? Let's change our situation and they will stop targeting us. The rate we are going, will we default? Hmm? Will we default on our debt payments? The rate at which we are going? I want us to look at good sales and swap and we will not be on the, that uh, list. Tangent? No. Really? No. I don't want to hear any default. Okay, that's interesting. It's a bad word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember, Ghana, Ghana will never default. I remember some time ago. Yeah. You, you were completely averse to words like Ghana is in crisis. Ghana, you, you choose words I, like we are challenged. Yes, I didn't, yeah, I didn't want that. Yes. I don't want <laughs> bad words, you know, like uh, uh, poverty and so on. No, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I told the world back, I, I didn't want the word poverty alleviation. They should yeah. remove poverty. <laughs> I don't, why crisis? But that's the reality, really. 
you have to work at it. I get you, but it's the reality we are dealing with. That can be changed. Mm. Now, let me ask you this. Change it and let them not target you. I want us to compare, I mean, bring it out to the ordinary person's level. What does all of this mean for the ordinary man? We are um, downgrades with the inflation, with the state of the city, and virtually everything. In fact, people are complaining today. They are talking about serious hardship in the country. What does all of these things mean for the ordinary person? The ordinary person is suffering. Hmm. Don't you have relatives? Yeah. Extended family? Yeah. Friends? The pressure has increased. What are they saying? They are suffering. Yeah. And they call you asking for 500 cities to pay medical bills, school fees. They are all suffering. That's true. So it is a problem. Hmm. It is a real problem. Every Guinean is suffering. Now, there's a question though. This question is important because when you became finance minister in 2009, we went to an IMF program. People, I mean, people tend to pretend we were not in an IMF. I don't know if how people did it, but it was almost like we're not aware we are in an IMF program. Between that, in 2015, we went for another IMF program. We are preparing to go for some say 17th, others say 18th, but more importantly, another IMF program because we are talking to them. Would they work? You see, we had an IMA program, you're yeah. right, mm -hmm. under Professor Mills. Yes. But Guineans were not even aware. Th that's what, that's, I, I, maybe people did communication around it so nicely. No. That it didn't sound like we had an IMA program. We didn't go in for the IMA program. They gave it to us. Sorry, I mean, this is new. Yes, let me explain. Mm -hmm. We had gone to the IMA in April 2009 during the sp spring meeting. Yeah. With a letter asking them to give us a standby facility. We had said that in 2000, we had done so well as a nation, yeah. but we had a trade shock mm -hmm. and we lost everything we had built. So this time, give us a buffer. We don't want a program. And we argued our case out for so many hours. The following day, we went to continue and they told us, we have looked at your budget. The budget you read on the 5th March which we had no hand in its preparation. You know? mm -hmm. And the budget is so efficient, so austere, this is the word austere. Okay. You have decided to reduce your deficit on your own from 14.5% to 9.4 in a year. You have cut that, you have cut that. This is a very efficient budget. We are taking this, your budget, as your program, Ghana. And we are giving you all these benefits. They adopted the Ghanaian budget. Yes. Our economic program as we, was read. The budget as it was, was adopted. They had to come out of, the, out of the meeting to talk to my president. This is what they are saying. They're giving mm -hmm. all these. And indeed, he was very happy. Oh, I see. Scholastic. So the three years, we chopped the best results ever in this country. Really? Of course, yes. 31 months of decade inflation. It's never happened in this country before. I just need to it's remind you. At I just need to remind you alone. that we have been to IMF program since the 60s. But this program was so different. Okay. Tell us, I mean, where did we fall short? We achieved almost, to the extent that even the ECOWAS conversion criteria, we achieved mm -hmm. everything. For ECO? Yes. We hit about 1.1 million tons of cocoa production in 2011. Inflation, you, you know it, Yeah. for almost three years, was below 10. Yeah, it kept being said consistently. And, and the, there is a letter here that I'll give to you. It did. Before the end of the year, Ghana City had become the best city for trading in the emerging markets, including even Russia. I'll give a copy here. Mm. We call it carry trade. So at a most period has been the best, the results I would say were are matched and still nobody, nobody has <laughs> beaten at a most economic record. I get your point. Now and there was a pro IMF program. Yeah. When we even paid, not paid, when he, he was invited by Obama in March 2012 to Washington and the IMF paid us a visit 
the IMF managing director commenting about Ghana's economic performance said something Ghanaians would not believe that they were prepared to even help Ghana in the oil industry. I see. The letter is here. I'll show it to you today. Mm -hmm. So if you perform, you become very credible with the IMF program, you can get anything. The managing director telling the president, Sir President, I'm so happy about your performance. Okay. The funds be prepared to do this for you. Even in the oil industry, we will support you. Meanwhile, they have supported Ghana to attract $3 billion facility from China. Mm. You remember? Yeah. All this were discussed at the meeting. So we ran an IMA program between June 2009, June 2012. The results were excellent. Mm. Would this one be excellent too? That's what? The one that we are in. It depends for. the way we manage it. The IMF will not give you a, pro a program. You will design your own program mm -hmm. for them to endorse it. Okay. That's what happened to Ghana in 2009. Mm -hmm. They endorsed our budget as a program. That's interesting. So there are those who are actually saying as we speak that, listen, our current crisis we cannot let the people who have brought us here take us into the future with it. They have actually singled out. And just l this week, Professor Ajimandia, Kofo Foundation, has joined the calls for the finance minister to leave office. Others even say that the entire economic management team should be dissolved. The crux of the conversation is that the same people who took us to this level cannot be the ones taking us forward or making us be successful in the area. Now, I'll ask your opinion, since you have been finance minister before, I'll ask your opinion about whether or not the finance minister should go. But before then, how did they work? Because we've heard some people hint that the economic management team is giving advice that people are not taking. How did the economic management team at your time work? I was smiling because, you see, you were quoting what uh, Einstein said years ago. Einstein said, no problem mm -hmm. can be solved. But from the same level of consciousness, okay. that created the problem. Mm. Einstein said so. No, but you are basically quoting him because you want to say he should go to. No, you, you, you quoted him. Yeah. <laughs> well, I get you. Mm. So it's a very dicey issue. Mm. One person doesn't make an economic team. That's true. You understand? So I wouldn't like to comment on that. You don't want him to go? No. I wouldn't like to. Is it because you have been in finance? Because I've, 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 is it because you have been finance minister before? No, not because of oh, what, what friend. Einstein said. Are you saying that one person created a problem or a group? They say he's the man who told us not long ago we are not going to the IMF, yes. that we are a proud nation, yes. and that we are not a country that's going to be lobbed to some Western country or which is well grouping to manage the economy for us, that we are old enough to manage our own business, and IMF was not on the table. Just by backtracking, that's what someone said. Is he the leader of the nation? No, he's not. I mean, of course. It's a leadership problem. It's a leadership problem. Really? Of course he is. I no, because we can't ask the president to leave. That, that's the other point. No, 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 we can ask the guy who's managing the economy to leave. You don't think so? I wouldn't comment on that because I do not know what's going on there. Okay. Now, there's a question, though. When they meet, mm -hmm. I don't know who says what. Oh, I see. That's interesting. And they don't publish their details for us to also so, see. So, I do not know who said what. How did the economic management team work during your time? During my time, you see, my president was uh, a tax professor, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Not only that, he had headed the Internal Revenue Service for eight years. I had a public finance background, mm -hmm. even though I was a, a banker. So that's how the two of us met. It was a team. Okay, I see. <laughs> and every week we were mm -hmm. meeting on the economy. He was a revenue man. I'm asking about the economic management team. So, let me see. Mm -hmm. He formed his own economic advisory council. Oh, I see. Headed by the late Dr. Nankani, a World Bank economist. Mm -hmm. We had people like uh, Toby Afede on it, Dr. Kwesi on it. The governor was on it. 
The late Professor Apple of Cape Coast University was also okay. a member. That distinguished people were on that council. I worked with them, together with my pre president, who was a, a tax <laughs> a revenue man. So I had no difficulty. That's how I worked about the economy. There was no functional economic management team. I think I dealt more with the council than that than any other team. I see. Th th this, this is interesting yeah. because there's a lot of focus today about whether the economic management team has failed or not failed. And some say it, it has what? failed or not failed because of where we are. There's a lot of focus on it. Do you think that's really the problem? You know, I, my time, the focus was on the President's Economic Advisory Council. Oh, I see. Yes. Yes. Has the current economic management team failed in your eyes? Failed? Yes, from where you sit. The economy is in difficulty. Mm -hmm. The economy has failed. Th there, there is something to be said. It's a problem, uh, see, mm -hmm. I wouldn't like to blame, I don't like blame game. Yeah, I get you. I believe in solving problems. We are in a hole now. We are in an economic hole. Mm -hmm. How do we come out? It is not economic, it is not the economic management team or Mr. B or Mr. D. How do we all Guineans come out of this hole? You understand me? Yeah. That's what we should do. And not apportion blame. I don't believe in that. People are asking for a reshuffle. Do you support the call? That's what I'm talking about. You're talking about people. Yeah. How do we get out? They say that the people there, they can't do the job. So put new people there. Come out with ideas. I'm saying that we should look at our gold. Okay. Sell the gold. <laughs> Mobilize like something to resolve the problem. I see. Let's look at problem solving and not blaming people. What kind of a president will Ghana need going forward? Going forward, we have had a lot of lawyers, you know. Mr. Yeah. Kufo is a lawyer. <laughs> Prof. Mills is a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kufo is a lawyer. That's true. Shall we try some business people, a lot of business background? You, you skipped former President Mahama. He wasn't a lawyer, actually. I, 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 oh, yeah, you mentioned I, a lot of lawyers. I don't mention only lawyers. Oh, ah, okay. He is a communications expert. Yes. We have had one there. But mm -hmm. I'm saying we have had a lot of lawyers in I this love country. them. Can we try business people too, with experience in business? Because we have that situation. We are managing an economy, it's business. You are basically saying you. Guineans will determine who should be the leader. You, you, you are basically saying that somebody who, because the fold is somebody, of course, you've done so before. You, you've been in that, that field before, you've done politics too. Let's leave that to Guineans. I get you. Th there's a question, though, about um, the kind of future we should want for our people. Yeah. What do you think should be the Ghanaian dream, and how should we pursue it? Ghanaian dream is to give every Ghanaian opportunity okay. to become what he should become, what God had made him to be. Mm. Freedom to succeed. That's what I call auto. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Guineans should be free. Okay. Have the freedom to do what they want to do for themselves. You understand? That's the Ghanaian dream I'm talking about. Without any restrictions. No matter the background of a person, the birth. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Maybe Koko Fabian's son. Okay. A governor's son, mm. a media man's son like you, mm -hmm. they should all have the same opportunity to rise to where they want to be. That's the Ghanaian dream I've been talking about. Freedom. Doc, we can leave it here. I want to see this as perhaps the first in a series. I hope you're okay with it. Yes, that I'm we should talk more. I'm happy with Because there are other ones that we should actually get into. At some point, we should discuss the politics part too very well and go into the details of it. So thank you so much for joining us today on our front. Thank you very much. Thank you. Raymond, I've enjoyed also talking to you. Thank you. Well, folks, that's where we tied the ribbons on today's edition of Our Front. Many thanks to you for watching.